Hey there. Welcome to the 16th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about debugging your code. Debugging your code has to do with finding a bug which causes your script to run in an un unexpected way or to not run at all and fix that bug. The point of debugging should also be to find out why a bug exists in the first place because if you can understand why something has happened, you can prevent it from happening again in the future. We're going to spend a lot of time in our developer tools in this tutorial and we're going to use a base HTML and JavaScript file rather than JS Fiddle. Uh, more specifically, we're going to spend a lot of time in JavaScript Console and the Sources tab, which I briefly covered in my tutorial covering the developer tools in your browser, which isn't really part of this series, but it's still there. So the Sources tab lists all the files that are being referenced in your page right here. So this is any file that's linked. If there are images, there will be images. So right now it's just debugging.html. So this is just the HTML file. Let's look at what we have here. So what I have in front of you is a basic debugging.html file that I created, you can name it anything you want, with a reference to a script.js file. The reason we cannot see it in the sources file here is because nothing from that, nothing from this line here, from line 4, is is, is uh, being triggered into the HTML, so there's nothing happening, so there's nothing to show. Let's go back. And I have a few div ID set up, a title, math, and modify me, similar to the one to set up to the JavaScript console tutorial and we're going to start doing code here. So the reason we're not going to mix HTML and JavaScript in our series is because it's not best practice. It's best practice to just leave them separate. I'm sure you've seen other tutorials where people do like div ID blah 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 you know on click and then just start typing in JavaScript functions right here which is not really best practice because if you have to debug something it'll be really difficult. You might as well just debug everything in one place rather than two places or three places or or you know just start looking for stuff. Uh, and putting things into a separate JS file also lets you reuse your code over and over again. So let's take a look at our script.js file. It's empty. So we're going to do some we're going to code some stuff and have bugs on purpose and then I'll take you through my debugging process process and help you develop your own. So let's just do some math. Like uh, in tutorial number three, so we'll do var add equals to five plus twenty. And instead of uh, printing it to the console, we're going to do document get element by id math dot inner HTML or inner text it doesn't matter and add. So what this is doing is I'm going to save this uh, control s. We're going to take the value of add, which is going to be 25, and output it into the inner HTML of my math div ID right here. So this will be replaced. Let's see if it works. Now I go refresh. Nothing has happened. So now you can see that since the script.js is doing something, it's referenced in the sources tab. So you can see it right here. But there's an error. Uh, two places you can find the error. In the console, in the console log here, it says uncaught type error cannot set property of null. And in the sources tab right here, if you hover over the little x here, it says uncaught type error, it says the same thing. Uh, if you want to quickly jump to, if you have a lot of code here, I only have three lines, uh, but if you have, you know, thousands of lines, you want to quickly find where your bug is, uh, in your developer tools, uh, to the very right of the error in the JavaScript console, it gives you a little uh, hyperlink to the exact area, to the exact line, to the exact file in the exact line where your bug is. If I click on this, it takes me over here and it does a little highlighting. Let me click it again. You see the yellow highlighting. There it is. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so what this is doing, what this is saying is that uh, the error is with the inner HTML portion, saying it cannot find this. So inner HTML is a special property, but it, the math doesn't exist, but we know that it exists in our HTML because we can see it right here. So what's happening? So one thing to know about JavaScript and pretty much any web code, any web development, uh, any web programming, pretty much, uh, is that everything is done from top to bottom. So it loads line one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. So it loaded our script first on line four. Once it loaded this, once the browser loaded this, it goes to script and then executes all of this. After it's done, it comes back here and then executes the rest of this. Make sense? It's top to bottom. So what happened here is that uh, on this line, this does not exist yet because it wasn't rendered yet, it wasn't created yet. So it's trying to reference something that doesn't exist. The way to get around this is to use something called the window.onload function. So you, the syntax is window.onload equals to, and then you 
create a function, an anonymous function. Let's indent these and close it. So what this is saying is, before you execute anything within these curly braces here, wait for the window to load everything. So we're telling it to load everything in the HTML before executing the script. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back and let's refresh. There you go, 25. Right, error is gone. We just debugged something. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. All right, let's do some more practicing. So we'll do, I'm going to come back here. We'll do, uh, let's say I want to do add times equals to 10. So I'm doing add equals to add times 10. So 25 times 10 is going to be uh, 25, 250, excuse me. And then we'll do document dot get element by ID, math, we'll rewriting it again, inner HTML equals to add. So we're just multiplying it by 10 and then inputting into the add again. So let's go back. I refresh. I didn't save it. There we go. Save and then go back. Here we go 250. But we didn't see the 25. Did you? Nope. Nope. Okay. So this is where breakpoints in your developer tools comes in handy. So let's look at breakpoints here. Uh, in the sources tab, when you're browsing your script file right here, script.js, you can actually add breakpoints and tell the browser to pause uh, the execution of a script before carrying on. So by clicking on the line numbers here, I can add values. I can add breakpoints and tell the program to stop here. So now if I refresh, it pauses. It's pause and debugger. And I have two options. I can resume the script or move over to the next function call, which is just going over to the next line. So now when you're using this debugger tool, uh, something really special happens on the right side. You can now see your variables. So your local variables add, so local to this script only. So add is declared by the time it hits this and it is undefined because we did not process this line yet so this line hasn't happened yet so now if I click on step over to the next function call I'm just going to go over the next line now add is defined it went from undefined to 25 in our local scope here pretty cool right yep and in the script.js here we also see a little preview of what add is because that's a function and if I click on go to the next step in our HTML page here, we see that 25 has been executed. So if you do it without debugging, it'll it'll process so fast that you will never see the 25. You'll just see the 250. And now add here is 25. So let's go back one line. And now add is 250 everywhere. Right. So this debugger tool here is a really great way of find, figuring out if uh, your variables are getting the proper values of they're supposed to be getting, especially if you're modifying the same variable over and over again. You want to make sure that it's running properly at the various lines. Let's just run it. Okay, next. Let's keep going. So we have that done. So let's do, uh, let's try to add document.get element by ID to modify me. In our HTML, let's try to add a variable called my text. Now, if you're looking, you can see that I didn't declare it anywhere, so we know that it's a bug. So let's go back here. I'm just going to pause my breakpoints or remove my breakpoints. If you click on it again, they get removed. If you want to pause a breakpoint, uh, one tip here is you can right click and you click on disable breakpoint. So it'll just, uh, the opacity is going to go down a little bit, so it's not going to happen. Or you can come to the right here under breakpoints, just uncheck it to disable it temporarily. This way you know where you set your breakpoints in the past. Uh, in this case, I have just 10 lines, which isn't a really good really a big deal. So let's run it. So I got my 250, but this line did not execute. It says uncaught reference error. My text is not defined. So if I click on this, there we go. So my text is not defined anywhere. So we need to define it. So this is a another great way of figuring out if stuff is happening. So let me do a breakpoint there. It says, see, the variable my text does not appear here at all because we did not define it anywhere. But we're going to define it now. So we'll go back here. Before the my text, we'll do var my text equals to let me debug. And see, I'll this a little bit. Save. Go back. Let's execute. Let me run it. There you go. Now the my text 
variable appears on line 11, so let me debug, but it's undefined because we did not process this line yet. So now let's skip one, there we go, my text, let me debug, appears here. This is uh, the value of the my text variable, and after we run this, there we go, my HTML has changed. Now the last thing I'm going to talk to you about today is the debugger keyword in JavaScript. So I'm going to remove my breakpoint, go back to my script.js file, and let's do a debugger code. B B U G G E R. So this is a reserved keyword in JavaScript that that automatically triggers the debugger in your in your uh, web page if you have your developer tools open. So I'm going to save this. So go back. As you can see, I don't have any breakpoints. Uh, normally, if I have breakpoints, it'll automatically pause the script until I go past it. Uh, I'm going to close my developer tools. Refresh. Nothing happens, right? We don't know the difference. But let's open my developer tools again. Source this tab. It doesn't matter which tab you're in as long as the developer tools is open. Now, if I refresh, there you go. This is paused in debugger. It paused on line 6 because of the keyword debugger, even though I didn't tell my browser not to do it. If I go over, there you go. If I let it run, it runs. So every time I refresh, it'll stop wherever I have the keyword debugger uh, to help me debug my script. So this is a, a hard-coded way of debugging, of starting a debugger uh, for your script. Uh, this is not something that I normally use. I don't really practice this, but it's good to know that it's available to you if, for some reason, uh, breakpoints in your browser is not working. So that's all I have for debugging your code. I hope you found this useful. Um, we'll be using, we'll be debugging our code a lot in the next, uh, for the remainder of the series. So these are just a couple of good ways you can use, uh, methods you can use to debug your own code. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.